Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,427. Live today better than you did yesterday, so tomorrow you live better than today. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hey, Cars Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Covercraft. I've protected my vehicles with their products for decades. Want to keep your vehicle's interior looking new? It's easy with Covercraft seat covers. They'll protect your seats from the daily abuse of pets, children, weekend adventures, and even those everyday spills. It's a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to keep your vehicle looking new. All Covercraft seat covers are easy-on, easy-off design that are machine washable. You can choose from many fabric options, colors, and accessories, all designed and carefully sewn for your special vehicles. Their seat gloves are semi-custom fit for cars and trucks, and their seat savers, a favorite of mine, are custom tailored to fit your seats like a glove. Work truck seat covers are tough, durable, denim weight fabric. It's like putting a pair of rugged jeans on your truck's seats. Want to stay warm? Covercraft also offers seat heaters. Covercraft is the right choice. Learn more today at Covercraft.com and tell them Mark at Cars Yeah sent you. That's Covercraft.com. My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for the enthusiast and the collector. It's your monthly must-read whether you dream of owning a collector car, have two cars, or 200. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years, and it's filled with valuable articles, intelligent write-ups, and the latest auction sales. Go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today. Plus, you'll get the exclusive SEM guide to restoration shops included for free. At checkout, use the code CARSYA and receive a 50% discount on your digital subscription. It's an exclusive offer from me here at Cars Yeah. I'm Mark Green, and I love Sports Car Market Magazine. Hello, automotive enthusiasts. I'm revved up and so excited to introduce today's very special guest, calling in from Irvine, California, Uli Perez. Hey, Uli, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right, buddy. Uli Perez is the International Franchise Manager and Operations Quality Control Manager at K1 Speed where he's been for over 15 years. Founded in 2003, K1 Speed has grown to become the premier worldwide karting company. With kart racing locations around the globe and the United States, K1 brings the thrill and excitement of indoor karting to a wide range of enthusiasts. Their facilities include a paddock lounge, meeting rooms, pool tables, and it's the perfect place to host corporate events, parties, or just have a lot of fun with your friends. Uli has a passion for all things automotive and has spent time behind the wheel In carts, of course, and race cars, including Legends, Bandoleros, Spec Trucks, and Sportsman Class race cars. So, Uli, I've told our listeners just a little bit about you. Would you take a brief moment before I jump into the questions and share a little bit more about your career and a very obvious passion for driving pretty fast? Pretty fast. As you mentioned before, I work for a great company called K1 Speed Indoor Go-Karting. We have locations nationwide and internationally going all the way from Korea to China, Canada, Mexico, Puerto Rico, Lyon, France, and we're expanding throughout the whole globe here. Uh, wow. We want to bring go-karting to everybody because I think anybody who's involved with cars loves racing. Yeah, no kidding. Well, we're going to have some fun today uh, taking some laps here. But first, as we continue on your journey, I want to ask you for a success quote or a mantra, something that has meaning for you. It's a nice way to get the inspirational tires smoking here on cars. Yeah. So Uli, I know you love to drive, so take the wheel. Well, inspirational, uh, I would have to say seat time. I think anything in life, you need to have seat time. If you want to be good at what you do, you need to have seat time. If you love cars, you love driving them, it's called seat time. If you want to be a champion, you need seat time. So just in life, you take that and you got to get in a go-kart. You got to start racing. You got to get some seat time. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned too, for life, I believe, you know, it's that way with anything. If you want to get good at something, you've got to spend time at it. And it's just the same thing. You've got to sit down and do it over and over and over again. I know when I was racing vintage cars, uh, that was a lot of what the, my coaches were telling me. You just got to get out there. You can't just go on the race weekends and expect to do well. You got to do practicing, laps, 
spend time in the car, really get to learn it. So it's all about seat time. I want to go back in time a little bit with you talking about seat time and have you share a story that instigated this passion you have for cars. Did you tell us a pivotal moment in your life when you knew that you were going to be a car guy and love to race? Well, I there's probably two occasions. I can't just particular uh, pick out one, but I, I have two older brothers and uh, one of them had a 1969 uh, Chevy Camaro, uh, that bright orange with the white stripes across the hood. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, that that's one, and then my other one, my my brother had a Riviera uh, with the with the long glass on the back, and I would get taken to preschool by both my brothers here and there occasionally, and I would love to be in their cars because they only knew one speed, and that was fast. <laughs> of course, your mom didn't know about that, uh, but uh, well, the Riviera, what a cool car! I remember that big, beautiful piece of glass in the back, and in fact, in the the most recent Sports Car Market magazine, they actually featured that car and talked a bit about how it's kind of making a little bit of a comeback here, but I think it's always been pretty cool. And that other car you talked about, Creamsicle, is what I like to think about yes. in that color combination. They're great cars. They're great cars. Very fast cars. My brothers were uh, we're talking about in the, early, the late 70s, and they were all about having the fastest car, and they would always super up their cars. I'd always see them working on their cars, getting them faster. And, and I was very fortunate in the morning. They'd always be running late. So we'd always go fast to drop me off to preschool. <laughs> there you go. Well, let's take a look at some of the roads you've driven down and talk about a big challenge or even a failure in your, your life, your business, whatever you want to talk about here. More importantly, though, after you've taken us down that road, that was a bit of a challenge. Tell us what you learned from that and how it helped you move forward in a positive way. Well, I mean, I've always lived a, a kind of a motto that says, you know, you live today better than you did yesterday. So tomorrow you live better than today. That's always been something that's been ingrained in me since I was a young, a young age. And uh, I've always tried to use whatever happens today to, to just get past it, move forward, get up, uh, brush off whatever you need to brush off and then move forward for, for tomorrow because it's got to be better than today. You know, yeah, it's, it's, you gotta, you gotta have that mentality that that tomorrow's going to be better and the next day you're going to make it better. And if you do that, if you have that mentality, then you're always going to move ahead in life and you're not going to let little things in life set you back. So give me an example of something that kind of maybe messed up that perfect day for you, something you kind of went, ah, geez, I got to get through this uh, so that we can maybe share that experience with others who might be going through the same thing and help them realize that, you know what, it isn't the end of the world. Tomorrow can be better if you just approach it with the right perspective. So is there a specific thing that's happened to you in life uh, or in work, career, whatever it might be, uh, that you could share? Yeah, there's, there's been a, a – um, boy, there's, there's not just one. I think if, if, well, if we don't – yeah, if we don't go through a lot of stuff in life with a lot of, uh, a lot of setbacks, we're never going to grow to be the people that we are today. But I will tell you, talking about cars and the situation, moving up into the Bandoleros series, I, uh, my first time in a Bandolero, uh, going out to the racetrack. And not being able to know how to set up a car, and and you talk about life is how you set up your life, how you set up your car is how are you going to be able to drive on the track. So I remember going out there and I kept spinning the car out during practice, during qualifying, and my whole thing was, man, how am I going to go through this whole day in the race without spinning out and wrecking? And I'll tell you, I probably spun out that weekend just in practice and qualifying probably fifteen to twenty times. And it's not fun when your car is not set up right and, and you keep spinning out. You're trying to figure it out. You're trying to get a, a, a grip on things. And, and it just takes someone to come over and someone you reaching out to someone and they say, hey, I'm having this problem. How do I cure it? Ended up spinning out only once during the race, but was able to get a grip of the car during the race and make it work for me. So just like anything in life and racing, you, it's important that you ask questions. It's important that you reach out because that's the only way you're going to get better at things. You know, that's a that's probably one of the, well, that is the most important part of that story you've shared is if you're having challenges, don't be afraid to reach out to other people. And explain to our listeners who might not understand Bandolero racing, because I know when we were talking in our pre-chat, I wasn't that familiar with that kind of racing. What is it? Well, Bandoleros is kind of like a, a starter type of racing when you're a very young age as a kid uh, or a teen. Uh, to get started into racing in a very affordable type of racing. So there's a lot of tracks throughout the United States nationwide that, that have Bandolero series and you can get started there and you start learning how to maintain the car, how to work on it, 
and how to work on your driving skills at the same time. So as you learn that, get that experience, you can move into the next series. And, and for me, the next series was the Legend Cars, which is you go from one series that you probably got really good at, and then you have to move into something different that you have no idea what you're getting yourself into and learn uh, and learn again about everything that you need to learn about that particular car. Yeah, uh, listeners, you can uh, Google that and take a look at what he's talking about with these cars. Kind of like little go-karts with a, is it a fiberglass body that's put over the top that looks like a, a shrunk down uh, NASCAR or something? Yeah, it's like a little, it's just like a little plastic uh, fiberglass body that goes on top and it's a little, a little chassis frame. And, th- and these cars ran the big in Trenton's. And then the legend car is the next step, but also uh, you have a row cage with a fiberglass body. Look, they look like vintage old cars. Yeah, and then yeah. you have the Yamaha, uh, Yamaha engines and then with a drive shaft that goes from the front to the back, the engine is set up sideways. So you can run a drive shaft on the side, the, the right side of the driver. Yeah. Yeah. They're very, very cool. Well, let's have a little bit of fun and talk about your first really special vehicle. Now, this could be a first special car for you, or maybe it's the first time you jumped into a a race car-esque type of vehicle that you wanted to go racing in, but share that uh, original thought, the enthusiasm you had, and maybe a, sh- a memory you have about that ride. Well, oh my God, you just hit something. There's so many, so many cars I've been into that I've been wanting to get in, but I mean, if, I'm, if I'm talking about a real car, I have to talk about my 1991 Honda Civic four-door uh, DX model because that was my first car I got personally uh, from the dealership, and it's a true story. We test drove the car. I did not test drive the car at that time because I did not know how to drive stick shift. So okay. <laughs> uh, the, the salesperson went out. We went out for a drive, and I said, yeah, I, I like it. We sat down. I put the down payment down. We signed it. He gave me the keys, and, and I remember making a phone call, and I called my brother, and he said, what's up? And I said, hey, can you do me a favor? He said, what's going on? I said, I just bought a car, but I need you to come down here and drive it home for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he probably laughed just like we are right now, right? Yes, it, it's so funny. He, he, I remember that story, and he came down and got dropped off, and he was laughing that I bought a car that I could not drive home. And I, I'll tell you, I drove that car at midnight after 1 o'clock when there was no traffic, there was nobody on the roads, and I learned how to drive. Uh, yeah. In the middle of the night, up a hill, down a hill, at the stops, at the lights. I don't know how many times yep. I stalled it out till I got it down. Of course, of course. Well, I'll tell you, Uli, you're going to laugh at this story because when I was in high school, my first car was an automatic and it was kind of little old grandma's 1967 Chevy Nova. And I wanted to get rid of that as quick as I could. So I, I bought a 1967 Carmen Ghia and my mom went over and I remember she helped me a little bit. She threw in some dollars and into what I had saved up. And then uh, I got in the the guy, the owner drove it. I said, okay, I want to buy it. And then my mom gets ready to leave. And I go, "Uh, I don't know how to drive a stick. Um, And the guy said, well, you better figure it out because it's your car now. And my mom said, see at home. And she left. And so the, the guy I bought the car from gave me like one lesson around the street, you know, and then said, see you later, kid. Oh my gosh, that was the scariest drive. I had to drive from Point Loma, uh, San Diego, back to La Jolla, California, which, you know, is all through city driving and stuff. And I stalled at every single intersection. I could, oh, it was horrible. I got home, I was so freaked out. But that's how you learn, right? I can relate. I can relate. And if I can throw in a funny story that you just mentioned yeah. that right now. Uh, when I was, uh, you know, before I was able to drive, my one of my older brothers started learning how to drive. And, uh, we had an old Chevy uh, station wagon, and it was one of those that had this, the back seat was facing the traffic coming towards oh, you. Yeah. Uh-huh. It was sure. one of those old ones. And my brother learned how to drive, and he was in the garage, and he was going to pull the car, the, the station wagon out of the garage to, to wash Uh-oh. it. And uh, this is this, this shifters on the actual column, like on a tree. Oh, it's yeah. on the, it's on three the, on the tree. Yeah. It's three on the tree, and he put it in drive, and I see him uh-huh. put his, his right arm over the the seat to look back and he gives the gas and he goes forward into the wall. Oh, and the, no. Oh, I re- no. I, re- I remember the look on his face like, oh, how am I going to explain this to dad? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, <laughs> uh, we've all probably done something silly like that. How about, how about Silver's Remorse story? Do you have one in your life, a vehicle you've let go you wish you still had? 
Yeah, that would be my 91 Honda Civic. I think um, I learned a lot with that vehicle. It, it didn't. The funny part about that vehicle, when I bought it, it, it did not have power windows. It did not have air conditioning. It did not have a radio. Um, n- none of the features. It only had one left mirror. Didn't have the right side because I bought the car as economically and as cheap as possible. But uh, I had some good memories with that car, and a lot of my friends and my firstborn was actually. Uh, rode in that car and I wish I, 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 I would have kept that car and I still look for it. I, when I see a, a red little Honda Civic four door DX with the black bumpers, I still look and wonder if, if that's my car. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I understand. If, if, yeah, but you're always, your first car is, I think, is everybody's one car that you really wish they probably never get, got yeah, rid of. Yeah. Even if it wasn't something special, that 67 Nova I told you about years later after I'd gotten married. My wife and I, we'd had a child and we were sitting in some traffic and I looked over to my right and I said, oh, that looks just like the car I had in high school. And she goes, I think it was. It has a La Jolla High Viking sticker on the back window. And that was my original car. I couldn't believe it. It was, yeah, still out there. I mean, it was a long time later. So it was kind of brought a little bit of a smile to my, even though I never really liked it that much. But, you know, first cars, that's freedom and you can go hang out with your buddies and go to the beach and. For me, it's like yeah. your first. It's like your first girlfriend. Yeah, it's just great memories. Great memories. So uh, <laughs> fantastic. Well, let's uh, have you talk about K1 uh, Speed Harding Centers. I'd love for you to share a lot more about what makes these centers so special. You guys have a lot of unique features at these centers. It's not like what you would think a typical karting place would be like. So sell us on K1 Speed. Well, as you know, K1 was founded in 03. We have locations all the way from Hawaii, California, all the way through the Texas area, Illinois, Arizona, all the way to Florida. Now we've gone internationally where we have locations, like I mentioned before, we in Korea, China, France, Canada, Mexico, Puerto Rico, and we're expanding to multi- next year multiple locations throughout the world and, and countries. We keep growing. I started with the company it's just uh, just over 14 years and I've never thought in my life that we would be this big as a company, but it's entertainment. It's awesome racing, wheel-to-wheel racing. Uh, the cool thing about what we do is we're electric racing. As you know, everything's going electric. We use Tesla cars, electric motorcycles now. So everything is going great uh, with electric. And we've we've been there since since 03 and electric. And we keep growing. You're able to come here and race with your friends, like you mentioned, corporate parties, birthday parties, team building parties. You come in, you race. You do not smell like gas. You don't smell like fumes. But you still have the torque and the response of these go karts. Oh and, yeah, like slot cars. It, it, it's, <laughs> yeah, and you know, unbelievable with the technology of these new cars and the new models coming out. These cars are awesome. When you get out there and you come off the track, it's just a, a smile on your face. It's a relief because it's just you and the go kart and the track and other people on the track racing. Uh, I've been doing this for a very long time. Sometimes I get out there and and I come off and I. I forget what the enjoyment is about sometimes and I get out there and race and come back and, and I realize this is why I do what I do because we put face smiles on people's faces when they come off the track and they forget about everything else. They worry about their lap times. They had a good time. They pass their buddies. Uh, this is what it's about. It's to bring, is to bring racing to the consumer. They can't afford to really buy a race car and go to the track and set it up. But they can do wheel-to-wheel racing here with their friends at an economical price. Now, you are more than just a karting center, though. There's a lot more to do there, right? Yes. We've actually expanded our, our locations now. We've kind of uh, – years ago, we just, we just catered to the karting. But now we're – you know, we have paddock lounges that serve, uh, like, really food, gourmet food and good food and beer and wine. And we have large arcade areas. Some of our locations have the the VRs installed in them. Um, but it's it's an entertainment place. You come in, you can watch TVs, you can lounge out on the couches. You just enjoy the atmosphere and the racing and the music and what's going on yeah. for people who enjoy yeah. that. It's cool. Where can people go and learn more about K1? Well, if they go to k1speed.com, um, they can go and get all the hours, pricing, all the information, all the locations that we have throughout the throughout the world and go from there. They all have their different type of characteristics, but they're all K1s. They have the feel of each other. 
but each track is different. There's not one facility that has the identical track. Now, these are franchises? All of the U.S. locations are all corporately owned. Uh, we've started franchising uh, a couple of years ago. So most of our international locations are all French. Uh, all of them are all franchises. Uh, we just started franchising within the U.S. So if anybody's interested in, in franchising inside the U.S., we do have available territories. They can always reach out and go to k1speed.com and go to the uh, international or franchise button and they click on that and uh, send some information and we'll reach out to them. There you go. Check it out. I'll put a link on Uli's show notes page on the Car Show website. All right. We are up to the, well, actually, let me back up a little bit here because uh, I think what we're going to do first is say a thank you to today's Cars Yeah sponsors and we'll be right back. When you want proven performance, there's one brand that's been around since 1938. That's Edelbrock, building the finest American-made performance products for the street and track. Edelbrock's products are designed and dyno-proven to deliver maximum results. Edelbrock has thousands of made-in-the-USA performance products for all makes and models. From their new AVS2 carburetor and innovative ProFlow 4 EFI for your muscle car or truck. To superchargers for your daily driver and more, visit edelbrock.com. To check out the latest products for your ride and when you're ready to check out, enter cars yeah in the coupon code and get 10% off your order. That's Edelbrock, automotive performance since 1938. You take care of your cars, but who takes care of your investments? Tune-ups aren't just for engines. Updating your financial plan is important too. Your GPS may take you from A to B, but it won't help you on the road to financial freedom. For that, you need a good co-pilot and a very trusted advisor. Chris Kimball, CFP, is just the man for the job. He'll guide you down that road without driving you crazy. For over 25 years, Chris has helped people just like you and me with their financial planning and investments. With a master's degree in financial services, he is eminently qualified, and he's a car guy too. Learn more at chrisvkimble.com or call 866-ON-A-PLAN. Securities through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Member FINRA SIPC. CK Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of thousands of automotive enthusiasts around the globe? I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah, and I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah podcast and website. Contact me today and I'll show you how at mark at carsyeah.com or connect with me through the Cars Yeah website at carsyeah.com. All right, Uli, we are back and I have a bit of an introspective question for you. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a car, what would Uli be and why? I'd have to be a Morgan Sportster GT. Oh, only 10 made. And, and you know with the Morgans, the, the Sportster cars, if you look it up and you Google yeah. it, the, the GT, they only made, I think, if I recall, I like to say it was 10 or 11. I don't know if it was 10 plus the one they actually had as a demo. These are beautiful cars. They have the old slick look to these cars, but with the new technology in them. It's classy. It's just something that you don't see on the road on a daily basis. And it's unique. And I think that's how I look at myself is that's a vehicle that not everybody has or can get. And there's only one of me. So you, you try to say, hey, this is the type of car I would like. That's my dream car. I would say if I have to be a car, that would be the car. I like it. You're the first one of those here on Cars Yeah out of 1,427 guests. So <laughs> you are unique indeed, my friend. All right, we are entering the last lap. I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some quick blips of that Morgan GT throttle. So here we go. What's the best automotive advice you've ever received? Uh, best automotive advice that I have received and actually have given myself is don't ever buy a car you can't afford to repair. Yeah, yes, <laughs> most definitely. Would you share one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your many successes over the years? Uh, organization. I think it's important that you create a good uh, organizational habit and always be optimistic and, and, and you'll be able to move forward with that way. Well, definitely for a guy like you, I mean, you travel so much, you're doing uh, multiple jobs, many hats on your head. So got to be organized. How about a resource? Is there one that you'd like to share with our listeners that you've enjoyed? Google. 
Google has the <laughs> answers for everything. Isn't it incredible? You know, my son works there. And every time I call him, he never gives me an answer other than Google it, Dad. So, yeah, Google, definitely amazing resource. How about if I could arrange for you to sit down and have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased? Who would it be? Well, there's. I would have to say there's probably three people. Luckily, in, luckily in my past, I was able to be in the automotive industry. I was able to be part of the 76 Racing Fuel crew uh, for NASCAR, and I was able to travel to all the NASCAR tracks on the West Coast and meet a lot of the professional drivers in NASCAR. I did have the ability, to, the, the opportunity to meet Dale Earnhardt twice. He would be one I would like to sit down and, and just have a conversation about cars, his career. Uh, but there would be another guy who crosses my mind, and that's Tim Richardson. He's no longer with us also. He was uh, probably a, a, a very upcoming NASCAR driver. He was very flamboyant in the NASCAR series, something different than what we're used to seeing in NASCAR, where we're used to seeing, uh, you know, the Eastern country rednecks. That was their whole thing is racing, but he was more of a West Coast. He loved being in the ocean. He loved riding uh, motorcycles. So he was very, that's the guy that I would like to listen to his life and his, his out, his out, his outlook and his views on, on life and racing. Yeah. Very cool. Both those gentlemen maybe would be great to sit down with. How about a book? Is there a book you've, Read that you'd like to share today? The Power to Prevail. It was handed down by a friend of mine. He actually, it, this is a good book to, to read when you're going through some tough times, but it's also a book to actually uh, get you prepared to go through some tough times. So The Power to Prevail was probably the one book that I, I do remember in my head and some of, some of the chapters and to be a positive outlook in life and, and to move forward. Book by David Foster. Yeah, great book. Excellent recommendation. All right, we are up to the checkered flag here, Uli, in this last question. It could be a bit of a doozy. Today, I'm going to buy you any cool collector car on the planet. Maybe you've already answered this question, but we'll see if you change your mind here with these with these rules. One is uh, you can't sell it to buy a bunch of other toys with, meaning you've got to keep it. You have to drive it. No garage queens. And it's the only one cool collector car that you can have. So uh, what's it going to be? Oh, I think I've already answered that question. That would have to be the Morgan Sportster GT. Yeah, uh, yeah. Th- this is very a unique. It's a unique vehicle. If you're able to Google it, Google it. They have a cool black one with the yellow strap across the one side of the car to the other. It's just beautiful. I think everybody everybody looks at a different car a little bit different. And just like, you know, we either look at our wives or our girlfriends, there's something beautiful that we see in that person. The same thing we see a car. You see a car, you go, I got to have it. I love it. This is what I want. And it's always on your mind. There you go. Morgan Sports, your GT. You're the first person to select that car, which again, like I said earlier, makes you rather unique. So I will get to work and see if I can find one of those. You want it in black, right? In black, yes. And, I, and I, I, I'm always researching it. And the the one that I was looking for was just recently sold about a year ago to another collector. Uh, I think it was for a hundred and a hundred and fifty five, hundred and fifty six euro. But it was a it's a beautiful car. So I'm always looking to see if anyone comes up on sale here. There's only a few. There's only a few here in the U.S. Uh, they're not GTs, but uh, there's a few in the U.S. That, that are that do come up for sale here. And then I'm always keeping an eye on it. I think the only time I've ever seen one of those is at the SEMA show. Um, there was one in a booth once and I had never seen one in person. I'm like, wait a minute. What is, it? I thought it was some kind of a custom. And I guess with this fuse they made, they are somewhat of a custom car, but, uh, I thought somebody had done something to a Morgan and turned it into this kind of more modern-esque kind of car, but, uh, beautiful flowing lines. Uli, you've taken me on a great ride today. I knew we'd have some fun here carting around the track. I want to thank you for sharing your journey. Could you offer us one little parting piece of Wisdom or guidance before you drive off into the California sunset in that Morgan Sportster GT. So buckle up, roll down the windows, turn on the radio, and just hit the road and just enjoy your vehicle you're driving. And also, you got to come to K1 Speed if you haven't been to an indoor go kart facility. Go to k1speed.com, find out where we're at, and you got to hit the track. Absolutely. I'll make sure to put a link to that. Check it out, k1speed.com. If you've got an event coming up, maybe it's a birthday, a corporate event, or you just want to go have some fun, check out K1 Speed. You will have a blast. Uli, thanks for being so generous today with your time and expertise and for sharing your experiences with me and the listeners. A little shout out to uh, Lisa Delaney for putting this whole thing together for us today. 
Thank you, Lisa. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thank you very much for taking me on this road. I'm buckled up. And next time you want to go, let's go for a ride. Yeah, I'm going to come visit you and we're going to do some kart racing. You can teach me a thing or two. Sounds like (laughs) fun. K1speed.com. See you, buddy. Hey, Mark Green here from Cars Yeah. Did you know you can now see me on the Cars Yeah TV show? It's a weekly visit to some of my past Cars Yeah podcast guests, and I take you along for the ride. You go behind the garage door and into their lives, their businesses, and you get to see what makes them successful. With tens of millions of viewers, Cars Yeah TV is making its mark. Cars Yeah TV is available on MAV TV and Lucas Oil Racing TV. You'll find MAV TV on Direct TV. Fubo TV, Fios by Verizon, or you can stream it through Lucas Oil Racing Television online. And they said I only had a face for podcasting. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!